to be regenerating those forces that you're discussing, there has to be a reunification, a reunification of men and women principles. Because um, a lot of these young people, as Thurman, you notice, they're just lacking the male principle. And um, we've discussed this before, how I was fortunate to come out of a, a household with, with a father and a mother and had a man there to, you know, more or less show me, you know, the do's and don'ts, the strengths, the weaknesses. And a lot of these young people don't have that. So to answer your question, I think it's going to have to be like an outreach of, of men who don't have, uh, young men who did not have that, uh, 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 being able to be raised with a father at home. It has to be an outreach of, kind of like what a cable on has always done, uh, uh, reach out to the youth through the different programs and, you know, talking to the youth in the, in the detention centers and things like that. Um, that to me, that would be what, and that's not something that I have done to be honest with you. I got nephews and grandchildren and stuff like that, that I do that with, but on a grand scale, that's what would have to be happening. It has to be some kind of, 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 in other words, uh, overlapping responsibilities. Like this may not necessarily be my son, but I have to, contribute to nurturing them and the sisters would have to kind of relinquish in a sense because I know a lot of sisters are protective and very uh, and cautious and, and, and um, how could I say uh, legitimately so uh, about you know letting their children be with someone they may be considered a stranger or whatever but don't you know you don't give them to a stranger you give them to somebody you know but I think there has to be this kind of communication and I think that's what's been lacking um, and, and until we kind of realize that, I mean, you know, uh, an extended family in a certain sense. Um, and because what I see a, a destructive force right now, and we've discussed this. If you, we talked about how, if you read Black Lives Matter's mantra, they are not really for the nucleus family. So that is what it seems like our people are being pushed in that direction right now. We got to be very careful. And it has to be people who speak up to the contrary of that, because what's happening is now our children are, and especially the young males, are being taught that men really have no no power, no say-so within the circle. I mean, really look at what's going on. It's been morphed into a queer lives matter thing, you know. So what my only point I'm making is until we reconnect as far as like individually in that family nucleus, uh, uh, friends or whatever, or uncles or, or whatever. I don't think a lot of that kingship can actually come back because, uh, I mean, you could have queens out there, but if, if they're not procreating and producing kings, then you, you'll never get to that. So, I mean, I may be going all over the place with that, but I mean, that's what you made me think when, when you posed that question. And what do we do about that? You know, I think that's the real... Uh, uh, question that, that I would have, you know, and I think I tried to answer it as best as I could, but can we get people to kind of understand that? And, um, cause we've been taught to be individuals at this point. We've been taught that, you know, a lot of women that, you know, you don't really need no man, you know, and, um, a lot of men don't have been raised with the responsibility to want to even be with a woman to nurture children. So, I mean, we got a, a tough road ahead of us as far as a people in a sense. And, and I see those destructive forces out every day, even when I work, you know, it's just like this nonchalant attitude about what's really going on in the world. People don't know and they don't want to know. So things like this have to grow, you know? So I'm not trying to take the whole farm over, but I mean, that's that, that would be my response to, to that. You know, we have to come to an agreement as far as what needs to be done. And I mean, to me, that's kind of my suggestion, you know, like you have a son, this person has a son or, or a daughter, whatever. A lot of daughters are not being raised in homes where they actually see the function of a man to even want to be with a man. So it's, it's an interesting dynamic that's going on out there. I can kind of leave it at that. You know, I just wanted to share that because when you pose that question, that's the first thing that popped in my mind. I'm reading Diop and he talks about the difference between, uh, uh, um, you know, the, the, the matrilineal system that comes out of Africa and how it's spread in different places and the destructive patriarchal system that came out of the, the Northern and how it clashed. And when it clashed, it actually would became to where the family or the man became the sole religion and kind of rule where the woman was taken away. Whereas in the African system, you know, the, the man went to live with the woman's family because in this society, the woman is treated like shit. 
And if you treat the woman like shit, she's going to raise her son to resent you. And when, if you look at the matrilineal system, where, it's, where a child is raised within that nursing with the women and the men come in, then they learn to develop and be sensitive to what the needs of the whole family is. I, and I see when this, this, this side of seat we have here, it's like, you know, anything goes, whatever the man says and whatever. And so you, they're not really raising kings, they're raising tyrants. You know, if you just look at this whole, even this political system and education system, it's, 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 it's all trash. So I just, you know, I'm just saying there's certain things as, as Africans, and I use that word kind of lightly too, because I mean, you know, who named Africa? You know, but, um, you know, we have to get back and start to study some of those systems that were, were uh, how can I say, were productive and uh, and look at the things that were destructive and, and, and kind of go back to those things. I'm not saying go back to the Stone Age or go back to, but definitely going back to when you're building pyramids. But I'm saying as far as that society where where uh, uh, the state was uh, was respected as a caretaker for the people as opposed to the people just being on their own and in a state like we have now which is just repressive and oppressive so i yield the floor at that point if anybody has anything to want to contribute to that hello thank you yeah thank you i was just um you know being on the quiet side in case anybody wanted to contribute anything to that and uh thank you so very much for the for the comment um, one of the one of the things that you said in this uh, aptly um, um, apl applicable for the conversation because um, well first of all uh, it has to do with tyrants and I'm going to get back to a quote but um, I first wanted to I was holding up um, the book of Diab when you were reading so were you refer referencing the African origin of civilization no by not that not that particular book I had okay. that one also it's a white okay. book it's the, it's the uh, uh, it deals with you know um, it's actually a small white book. I, why I can't think of the title right now, because you asked me, mm -hmm. but it's actually one of his smaller books. And then what he does is he goes to different countries and he explains the, the family uh, structures and these systems. And, you know, from like, you know, people who were nomadic as opposed to like Northern people born and being nomadic where they moved around and, you know, and they just had a different type of philosophy, a different type of worship. Uh, they had different totems. And then he deals with the African and, and, uh, and the Mediterranean area which was basically influenced by the Southern element, which would be Kemet, uh, Nubia, you know, uh, uh, Meroe and those places like that. And he breaks down each place uh, as far as, as far as he goes into Germany or he goes into like a um, uh, different, you know, ancient European group that came in and conquered different areas in the Mediterranean and the shit they brought with them. So that's what that particular book deals with. And he deals with it in sections. It's a much smaller book. And he deals with uh, basically the matrilineal, as opposed to patrilineal, and he shows you where it comes from and, okay. and how natural development centers around the protection of the woman, whereas opposed in the northern element or the patrial system, it, it basically is destructive to women who has no rights. You know, he can sell her, he can sell his children and things like that, where something with the matrilineal system, that would be something that would never even come into question. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so I, I don't know why the, 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 the title of the book escaped me right now but well, we, uh, we can bring it up at another time but thank you so very much for um you know making us aware that the book uh is, is something that we could use as a resource for this right. very topic and to segue into that um i want to um give thanks for a gift that i received called um nia let me see yeah in yon a Calendar of Revolutionary Daily Thoughts by Brother Malamu Baruti. And uh, for today's day, I'd like to um, share the quote, which talks about tyrants, uh, ironically. Um, yeah. The quote is, the limits of tyrants are prescribed by the endurance of those whom they oppress. And uh, this is a quote by Frederick Douglass, but I also like to read um, a paragraph if I may, because it sort of speaks to the uh, conversation that you were just having about children and parents um, and men. So it goes like this. We have no business sitting in judgment of our children. Parents who act as slaves deserve children who act as slaves. We, when we act out in shock and anguish over our children's thoughts and behavior, we show our own uh, refusal to be men and women we so proudly, proudly reclaim, proclaim that we are. It is beyond ignorance and in many cases beyond stupidity to pretend 
that when we close our eyes to the insanity of this reality and expect our children to somehow not be caught in it also. So uh, basically it's, it's, you know, um, saying that children become what we allow, and it speaks to the point that you have been talking about, we need to uh, mentor our children. Um, but again, you know, I was, I was, um, you know, I go back to the, uh, the question in terms of in the, in the landscape that we're in now. And I saw, um, they, he used the word, um, he didn't use the word mentor. You use the word mentor, but um, one of the things that I was, um, the, you know, language, sometimes we have to remember language and he, Jenga is the appropriate word versus mentor, which is, uh, a Greek, uh, con construct of, 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 um, of, of, of uh, sharing or passing down knowledge. So, um, to that point, um, can can we can we talk about other than so we we, we talked about communication, uh, the need to um, be a Jenga to young people. Can we talk about what? Some of the uh, characteristics of kinship are that we we might want to see within the community that um, are uh, camouflaged or uh, you know hidden behind certain movements that have been identified. But what would what would you as kings um, want to convey to younger people? That's like what what would you charge them to do in in times such as these? If, if that's an if that's an appropriate question, because again, I'm a woman, so um, uh, you know I don't want to put anybody on the spot. But if you had ideas around that theme, what would you be? What would you tell some young people listening today about how what is what does the king really involve? I'll let Thurman take that one if he wants it. <laughs> is he is he unmuted or what? He, he might be muted. Well, maybe he didn't want it. Oh, okay, I think he just unmuted. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Go ahead, brother. Oh, no, you go ahead. I, I mean, um, I just wanted to give you a floor for a little bit there. Yeah, well, I, I didn't, I didn't want, to, want to say too much uh, at the, at this time. Um, I thank you for all that, uh, what you had said earlier, and what you uh -huh. said. I, I, I wish this was recorded because it needed to be framed because you, you just covered a lot of valid necessities of our reawakening. And uh, in some simple terms, uh, there's a lot that can be said to the children in terms of telling them. I, I feel that another way that could probably maximize or reaching a greater number of them is to have interactions where we can just show them that comes out for some of them in a more powerful fashion versus telling them that this is what you should do and on and on. But, uh, so I think uh, even when you were talking for a few minutes earlier, there's a number of simultaneous things that we must do. And uh, so, for example, uh, the sister mentioned uh, from the uh, calendar of revolutionary thoughts, you know, it's, it's, it's in there that talks about a jigna, jigna versus uh, a mentor, that those kind of things that we could bring forth to the children, but bring it in a way that makes them get excited to know the difference. And that there's an there's a African ancient African approach to life that when you start dealing with words like mentor, a, 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 ment a mentor, and words like um, elder, for example, but from the ancient African perspective, the elder is something that's very well defined and the elder would be someone that has shown themselves uh, throughout time amongst the community and amongst other uh, genuine elders to be approved to be an elder because there are those that are just uh, kind of uh, lost, confused, babbling souls that uh, would only qualify as being, as the ancients would call them, olders. 
but to bring forth, and, and that's new to the minds of most of the people, but it's, it, that's just an example of something that, that gets many people's attention because they'll say, wow, they never heard it, never thought about it. But it, inwardly, a lot of us, the first time you hear it, it kind of, it makes some common sense. And so therefore, uh, in telling the younger folks that, uh, you know, at some point at whatever age you're supposed to, supposedly to be uh, an elder or, or older person, that there's really a definition to that. And if you don't know the cultural uh, requirements of that, and including learning and, and living it, then uh, whenever you reach that stage of so-called that age of being an elder, that at, as a young person that had, we've been told that we would have uh, changed our focus. I, I would have changed my focus differently a whole lot earlier if I had known that. And, uh, and, and overall, I, I think that uh, when most of the, uh, the questions and the conversation is we've got to nurture our people in a whole way, a comprehensive way of, uh, of living, uh, uh, living a life uh, in strong, with a powerful connection to the spirits, to the ancestors, to the universe, to the earth, and, and to the natural way. And when we lived in that harmonious way with the universe, with the most high, with the, with the ancestors of the universe and the earth, we were, give, we were given that comprehensive, uh, well-rounded view of, of life. We were, we were given, directed a, a lifestyle that kept us in harmony all the time versus this Europeanization that gives us um, or, or misteaches us a lifestyle that's disconnected from the universe, from the earth, and, and from the uh, genuine spirits and, and just live, living a, a foul, confused life. I'm done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you so very much. That's um, very awesome. And that's um, uh, central to the theme that, that we've been taught, that we um, hope to um, to lift and to continue to share, um, having to do with the ecology of the people. And um, I really appreciate your, uh, your, your reference to the natural way. Um, and it really uh, excites me, especially uh, right now, that we here in Virginia, we here in Richmond, are, um, um, you know, have an enormous opportunity um, to to make an impact um, for ecology and you know ecology being the foundation of economics um, if, if we can sort of get the steam rolling to um, to like I said to inform and to uh, you know um, or or, or um, find our way to the stream. Um, Baba Smalls may, puts it this way um, in the film Happy. He said um, basically that we need to find our happy stream. And uh, basically he's saying, you know, we need to find a place where we have that economic stream that we are living um, in the reality that you were just talking about in the natural way. Um, and, and it is having to do with uh with the river if you if if uh, if it were me um you know how do we create the new economic paradigm where um where we are living um connected to our natural way and harmonious and um and um and 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 seeing uh, things that here that are that are in front of us, you know, how do we approach these things? Like for example, um, being that we're here in in Richmond, um, and and just to share, you know, um, Baba Smalls went around and talked about, you know, every city has its sort of happy stream. You know, this is where Richmond we have um, authentic. Uh, chemist shrines sitting here in our midst and if you're not you know uh, looking for it it's going to be gone in January and you would have not had the opportunity to engage with um, with with this with the spiritual energy that is around us so um, 
how so um i guess i'm thinking of um is it, let me ask let me ask this question so we we have two schools of thought um that often circulate when we have discussions around uh economics or ask access to um uh, you know government resources um and but we live in a a a, a, a time where we see in other cities uh where they have created um pockets of sovereignty or pockets of um, um the districts where they kind of have um amassed a, a an energy uh where they're working within themselves versus working within the uh, current framework of government which we see having happened going on here in richmond um um could are, are you willing to share what your idea what your what you think might be the ideal in terms of um moving community forward to help us define our happy and you know that could be in metaphoric terms or in, in uh for actual happy terms <laughs> real was that question clear it was kind of long yeah, it's a long conversation. <laughs> like, what, what part do you want to answer? You know. Look, yeah. So uh, the question is, um, you know, so if I, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, go on, go on. No, I was just trying to um, clarify the question a little bit. So the question is, um, you know, as we're, you know, I mean, I know realistically, we just we need to, uh, you know, move forward in in. Uh, you know, in a in a in a uh, in a peaceful and a healthy direction, um, but we have a lot of situations that are going on now where um, you know we find we find a pull within um, the community. One pull is to create sovereign kinds of centers, and there's another pull to um, to allocate government resources. So, which direction do you um, do you think will be most beneficial? To the community in the long run, I think it depends on uh, what what aspect of person, uh, what 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 they're doing in the community. And let me also um, ask, and I apologize, but in the context of land, because remember that's one of the things that we that we're lifting in this conversation. We're talking about not only kingship, you know, not a, not only taking the reins um, for creating our own reality, um, but how do we do that in the context of land? So, um, you know, if reparations is, is part of the dialogue, I'd like to hear about that. If, like I said, it's the allocation of government resources, I'd like to hear that. Or or other direction. So, just want to put that on the floor. Well, as far as uh, reparations, I mean, of course, there's no, there's no argument that it's due us. But I don't think we should basically just be waiting on that because uh I know they've been talking reparations since I was like in elementary school, different people and stuff like that. Just like they were talking about legalizing marijuana back then. And that just slowly trickles from state to state. So if we're going to wait on that, then we'll, we'll still be waiting. I'm not saying it's never not going to come in some form or something like that. The forms they're suggesting are not necessarily uh, totally gonna lift everybody up. You know, they talk about, oh, we'll send your kid to school, whatever. It has a lot of different ways of looking at it. Um, as far as uh, government things or whatever, I, I guess if I was in certain aspects as far as, uh, depend, I mean, I'm not trying to pinpoint different things, but like some people have different programs going on where they're not getting much help and whatever. And if you can go get them government grants, then you're like, go on and get them. But as far as uh, land ownership, and we've discussed this before because, you know, I, we live on some land in my family and and nobody waited on anybody to do that. And until we can put in people's minds that the only way to do it is to be cooperative with each other, within families, within communities. And I would think it really needs to start within family because community wise, we've been taught so long not to trust each other that we, we it's hard for us to put our heads together on certain issues but within families it's possible 
Um, I'm riding through the country right now where I live. And I mean, I'm, I'm riding through areas that black people still own. You know, and, and I know they did it because when they these people came off these little plantations that are still up here, a lot of this land is intergenerational. You know, even these churches, even though I'm not a Christian, some of these churches up here, they're intergenerational. They've been here over 100 years, some of them. And the land around them has been here over 100 years, you know, but the, some of them have even lost aspect of that because they're selling, you know. But I think it has to be a thing where if you're talking about it's, it's, it's a twofold thing. It's economics between each other. And if, if you got, we are owed reparations. Reparation. So if it's like, hey, you know, if I can get like $10,000 or whatever, a grant from something like that, go for that too. I mean, I'm, that's the only way I can look at it. You know, you get what you get, you know. Um, but as far as land ownership, you know, they're pricing everything up so much, but that should not be a discouragement. And I look back to like coming up as a kid in uh, New York and just remembering how them brothers and not saying people should be Muslims, but I remember how them brothers used to be and how they used to pull them dollars and how they were building stores. And, you know, they had, uh, um, you know, uh, they had little supermarkets and stuff like that, but they had little steak and take stores and things like that. And that wasn't done with any government grants. That was done with people pulling their resources and more importantly, supporting each other by, you know, going into these places and, and spending your dollars with your own people. So there's it's a lot of different aspects. I mean, when you talk about land, land can also be, uh, it, it, you know, you go from land to, 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 to uh, how do you say, uh, 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 you know, the, the brick and mortar, you know what I'm saying, as far as a store or something like that. So it's, it's basically a, a little bit of both things as far as I look at it. Uh, if somebody was to offer me a grant right now for something that I was doing or whatever, it could be as far as education or, or trying to start some type of business or something like that, I say by all means take it. Because there are a lot of grants out here that there are they're not too many strings attached because being that I work in the government, you know, they got to get rid of so much money during the year. You know what I'm saying, uh, sister? They get allotments for the year just like every year, the budget for this year, the budget for 2021, you know, and they got to spend that up. So you can get that fine and ownership. It's got to be like, even like, you know, where I'm riding right now, I'm riding on both sides. It's black people live on both sides of this. And they did this because when they came out of those hard times, they realized, you know, I had to have a little piece of land of my own. And until, you know, I'm, I know it's hard for people by themselves to do that. So that's why it has to come through families. What we did as a family, sat down and was like, hey, this is what I'm going to do. And, and we were honest with each other. We put our money together, family to family, and we did something. So everybody doesn't have that, but if you can cooperate with people of a like minds, it's got to be done at some point or another because they're squeezing everybody out of the cities. I mean, you go on to Churchill, just like I'm from all. You know, when I go home, I don't even know the neighborhood no more. The, 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 the housing I grew up in, it's, it's, it's like probably damn near half the people are white in there now. That's in Harlem. So land ownership is important. It's got to be within the family, even if it's extended family. You know, I don't know. I hope that kind of answered your question a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so very much. Um, it, um, it is a reality that can happen, though, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know. Yeah, it did happen, absolutely. Um, and But what also has happened, um, and so thank you so very much. I I, I appreciate always uh, the comment about family meeting together to work together to make things happen. And also, um, uh, you know, that, 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 um, that we can do it. it it's definitely possible. Um, but um, I looked at a statistic. So um, some of you may know that um, I've been working in agriculture for a little while and I um, just I ran across a statistic that said something like there was only 1% African Americans that had land. And I know in my uh, my travels and, and work, I have, you know, when I go around, um, you know, driving around like you are, um, I will go into communities and I don't, and I will, you know, of course there are um, many people. As a matter of fact, I was just looking at a video on um, some folks that had horses. And I said, oh my goodness, there's so many people with horses. Um, you know, they got to have land for that. We are definitely uh, a people who have many resources. Um, there are also, there is also, however, a disproportionate number of um, white people 
that have uh, a lot. Um, so right. is there any, would anybody like to contribute conversation? I think we have some new visitors, so thanks so much for joining us on the, uh, on the call. Um, would anybody like to, um, um, you know, talk about that, uh, that imbalance in property ownership and what might be some remedies to, uh, to, uh, to correct that balance? You know, other than reparations, um, other than people giving it to you, which is very unlikely, they haven't done it in 400 years. Um, you know, how do we correct that balance? Um, in addition to, uh, as you already laid out quite eloquently, thank you, uh, brother, the family to family um, methodology approaches. Let me let me add this real quick, uh, or just to, and, I, and I'm not going to take the floor, but. A, a lot of things that I, I, I hear and listen, I listen a lot to uh, Dr. Claude Anderson. And I think if, 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 if some of us, when I say some, all of us really, would tune into some of his lectures, some of the people that are interviewing him, because the brother ain't gonna be here much longer. He, when you talked about the 1%, it's really like one half of 1%. And he talks about how in 1865, when they so-called emancipated you know, uh, on paper, so to speak, you know, how that, that was, you know, after we came out of that, that's about how much land we had. And we still, that's all the economics we still have. Mm -hmm. So we really have not moved. And I think some people should listen to some of his lectures. You know, there's many of them out there. I don't care if they're 15, 20 years old or, or one he just did last week, because his message has been consistent or his book, you know, uh, Black Labor, White Wealth. I mean, that, that kind of would answer the questions you're answering there. In that book, it answers those questions. So I think that would be a good need for us to just answer about what to do about that land ownership or wealth, economic, you know, economic wealth, because he basically lays it out, mm -hmm. you know, so I, I, I yield the floor to that. Thank you. Anybody else like to uh, get in on the conversation? Hey, brother Thurman, my <laughs> Greetings, this is um, Sister Saquette. Hi, everyone. Um, sorry, I'm joining late. But one of the things, and, and I, I didn't get your full question, um, Sister Monica, but uh, one of the things I've been doing this year and, you know, pacing the last few months is, you know, I, I've been years of listening to tapes and books. And I said, you know, this year I was just going to listen to things and really uh, put it into action, really take my money and put it where not listening, and I, I don't know how old everyone is on the call, but, you know, for us older ones, we've been listening to lectures and things for years, and and I've been really making some moves with my money, you know, and looking at property and looking at, you know, tax liens and really trying to do research and doing something versus just, and I hear you, brother, what you said earlier, listen to lectures, but I'm at the stage I've heard enough. And I want to know strategies and I want to surround myself by people that are doing the same thing. Um, because I think that's what our community needs. Um, I think, you know, one person was saying, you could read all about it, but what are you going to do? I mean, action speaks louder than words. So we as a community really, really need to get our families doing it. And I kept talking about it in lecture format, but I've been even showing my own children how to do it setting them up investment clubs, showing them land, showing them that versus just talking about it and reading, which reading is fundamental, but we now I think the point we've got to do something. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Anybody else like I, I don't, uh, Sister, did you just, my name, is, uh, yeah, my name is George. Did you just join the conversation? Yes, this is so um, Sister Saquette. Um, okay. I just joined late. Um, for, I'm okay. living in Greens Greensboro, North Carolina. Okay. Um, I lived a n number of years in um, Washington, D.C., but I live here now. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, that's what well, you might have missed what I discussed because I live on land and I was discussing how we as a family did that. Okay. And, um, you know, as, as far as, you know, putting our economics together. And we, we got, and I'm not saying this to be fun, but we bought like 50 acres. And I live out here, I've got a beautiful spread. You know, we, we did that in the family. And that's what I was talking about, I think, before you came on. And when I was discussing okay. uh, Dr. Claude Anderson, I wasn't saying, uh, I understand, I've heard no lectures. 
But I mean, if, if I don't know if you read that particular book of uh, Black Labor, White Wealth, and if you listen to some, he basically lays down the plan. But but just like you're saying, nobody's put no action on it. So I agree with you on that. So I, I think that's why I said you came in. I think you kind of missed some of the things that we have been discussing. And I wholeheartedly agree with what you were just saying. Yeah. Yeah, a few thanks and praise. Um, and um, and um, to the point, you know, when we have these kind of discussions, um, uh, it's just wonderful to hear all of the perspectives and it's also uh, wonderful to hear, um, you know, the strategies that are being in place. And, you know, one of the things, so like even when we have conversations, you know, I was very hesitant to, t to even give that statistic, um, statistic about, um, you know, what we don't have, because in fact, we have a great deal. A lot of people do have um, and have made moves. You know, a lot of families, like, you know, like I said, every time I go to a rodeo, I see a lot of beautiful families that have a, a lot of assets. Every time I go to a business conference, I see a lot of people who have uh, a lot of assets. So we definitely, you know, we there are um, great movements um, to, make, to make things happen, but um, I just, you know, but I think we could elevate or continue because um, historically we've always had. So we just need to um, continue this um, in, uh, this effort. And so um, it's now 7:55. Um, if there was there was, if there were any closing comments, I'm going to welcome them now um, because uh, at eight o'clock we're going to go ahead and uh, sign off for this conversation. Please know that we will be back here uh, next Tuesday. Um, elevating the conversation some more, perhaps bringing some strategies, bringing in some groups that are um, that are making moves and doing things um, within the community. Uh, initiatives that we, you know, there's always uh, people around who have uh, things that we can join. Um, and so, uh, with that, is any other any closing comments anybody like to make? Yeah, I'd like to. I'd, I'd like to just uh, short, quickly say that. When you mentioned uh, in the last minute or so, uh, some people talk about what we don't have and, and so therefore what we can't do. We focus too much on what we don't have or what we don't have at the moment. But if on a daily basis we focus on our intention, we start changing our energy, which affects the universe, and it brings forth a lot of what we really want. Because our people have historically been successful and getting a whole lot of what they really want, even if it's the wrong thing. So if we really want to be a good dancer at the club or whatever, we've been there. We want, really want to be a good basketball player, we've been there, we're still there. But we can be a whole lot more, and therefore we can transform a whole lot of the, and get the universal energies to transform with us in our favor when we stop downplaying and, and talking away what we would otherwise say we want because when we do that, it changes things dramatically. So in the ocean and in the woods, there are creatures out there that will hurt you, but you can change your energy where you've dramatically lowered the odds that they would hurt you. I'm done. Thank you. Thank you so much. Any others? No, that was powerful. Um, is everyone on the Zoom in the Richmond area or we have people from all over? Mm -hmm. right this time. Thank you. I'm, I apologize. I was late. I had misjudged the time, but next week I'll be sure to put it in my calendar. Okay, thanks. We appreciate your presence. We appreciate all of you all who joined on this very first um, uh, part of the series of Kingship and Land. And I think it's a, a very appropriate. Thank you so, so much, uh, Brother Thurman, for your comment that we do some ending affirmation. And um, I, let's see, um, this is just off the top of my head, but um, we, I tell you what, let's do a silent meditation on the affirmation of the elevation of kingship, and the elevation of land possession in every city, in every state, and around the world for African people.
Sing. Next week, I'm going to have my bell. <laughs> oh, you did. Ashe. 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 Thank you all so very much.